Lagavulin 2017 Natural Cask Strength Distillery Exclusive Bottling. Is this one you should be chasing after? Wait for the whiskey whistle. Hey my whiskey peeps, Mark here from Whiskey Whistle on YouTube sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you a very unique Lagavulin. Their 2017 Natural Cask Strength Distillery Exclusive Bottling. This was a loan, a very excellent loan from a Winnipeg Whiskey Club member, Kevin. Thanks so much, Kevin. Safe travels wherever you are. And so excited about this. I've waited quite a while. Um, he lent that to me at uh, the end of August uh, or was it the beginning of September? Anyway, end of August um, event that we had. And so, so, so thankful. Actually, no, that was the Canadian whiskey experience where he brought that for me, I think. Um, but anyway, just a, just a generous man. And thank you so much for that. So bottled in 2017, this is 54.1% ABV, uh, 700 milliliters, personally selected by the distillery team. No idea about casking. It doesn't say anything on there at all. But anyway, let's get it poured. Let's check out the color of the whiskey, the legs of this Lagavulin. Then we'll check out the nose, the palate, and the finish before we give it a whiskey whistle whiskey score. So check it out. See if this is something that you should be chasing after. Absolutely, you can get this at auction. I don't know if you can still get this now at the distillery. Probably not. They're probably onto the current year, I would imagine, 2019. But anyway, so thankful. And I don't have enough Lagavulin reviews on Whiskey Whistle. It's a fact. So now we're going to switch things up. We're going to try this Lagavulin in my Tua Irish Whiskey glass. Yep. Just to switch things up a little. I love this glass. I love the way it works. And I think that's going to lend itself to a much better experience for something of this caliber. When you are getting into exceptional whiskeys, shouldn't you be using an exceptional glass to really explore the nose and the palate and even enjoy it just because of its aesthetic beauty? Anyway, let's get this poured. Oh, big, big bubbles. Look at that, eh? That's when you know that you've got something that is high proof when you can get nice big bubbles forming. Um from the whiskey good sounds like a robot okay it's peat season right especially in winnipeg we had a crazy ass huge storm last week Thirty thousand trees decimated in winnipeg Crazy stuff. Again, Kevin, thank you so much. There we are. It's slightly cloudy. Look at that. Obviously unchill filtered, but right off the hop, you can see it's got that slight sort of lemony haze to it. Whoops. Okay. Beautiful. There's another Lagavulin I have yet to review, and that is the uh, Distiller's Edition. I'll do that as soon as the new one comes out, and I'll compare that year. I think that's 2018. Um, so we'll try 2018 with 2019, hopefully, or maybe 2020. Okay, first of all, let's check out the color of the whiskey. This is really natural looking to me. So light much lighter than the, the typical Lagavulin that I've seen, the 16-year-old. Lighter still than the distillery edition. And can you see that slight haze? Beautiful. All right, let's check out the legs of the whiskey. Lagavulin. Do you have nice legs? Oh, what do you think about the new Offerman edition of Lagavulin? 
Are you going to try and snag one of those? And then there's also a brand new uh, 2019 Diageo collection. I forget what they call that. Um, the distillery collection with a really, really funky label. I think it's a 12-year-old cask strength. Probably quite expensive. Um, but if uh, if you think that's something that I should try to, to, to snag, which will be difficult being where I am, well, I'll try. Okay, the legs. Let's wait and see what happens with the legs. Very slow to start. And then trickles down ever so slowly. And I wonder, given this light hue, is this perhaps a ex-bourbon matured Lagavulin? Oh yeah, look at that collection of legs right there. Very striated. striated. Beautiful. And it looks elegant even in, of course, in this beautiful Tua whiskey glass. Very nice. Okay, on to the nose. This glass makes it so easy to smell. I don't get the uh, the hard alcohol, even though it's cask strength. I'm getting lemon candy. I'm getting some um, kind of kind of a funny. It's called hanmi candy. Uh, Hanmi in Korean is uh, brown rice. So the Hanmi mat candy. I think barley sugar in Ireland is very similar. That's not sugar, that's candy. If you've heard that, no, don't try not to think of that as being like sugar. This is actually a candy. Um, I saw some not long ago in an international section here in Winnipeg. And I should have bought some. I'm so curious as to what... Um, barley sugar tastes like but beautiful nose the peat is so subtle it's a nice wet peat aromatic not harsh this is probably something that that somebody with a very modest enjoyment of peat could really enjoy here. Bowmore fans would love this. Bo pardon me, Bowmore. Bowmore fans would love this. What's in the name, right? Macri Moor. Not that dissimilar. A little bit sweeter overall. I get some um, burnt brush and the lemon, lemon candy, lemon vanilla pudding, lemon vanilla, such a, a lovely scent. There's a kind of an orchard note like an apple orchard where a lot of apples have been left on the vine beyond when they should have been picked. Maybe like an apple vinegar. Well, be beautiful nose. Very attractive, very appealing, very um, enticing aroma. All right, onto the palate. Cheers, everybody, and a big cheers to Kevin. Safe travels, my friend. Cheers. Such a very unusual, very different Lagavulin. I think we do have primarily ex-bourbon oak involved here maybe second fill with a bit of first fill 
I'm getting a lot of cedar, sauna, oak, oak, sorry, sauna, cedar, sort of a flavor, even though that's, that's really a scent. I've never actually licked cedar before. There's a slight effervescent note here as well. And a hint of that ethereal quality that I love so much where the whiskey begins to take over your senses. A slight sherbety fizzy note. I'm thinking this is probably predominantly first fill now, actually. Well seasoned, air seasoned, white American oak. making the palate so deliciously sweet. The peat is really the understudy here. The, um, the quiet voice in the background. The sweet aromatic oak is really in the forefront here entirely. Don't get me wrong, this is a peated whiskey and it's one that's not to be trifled with. Speaking of trifle, <laughs> mm. medium rich mouthfeel, not too thin, um, not as syrupy as it could be given that it's cask strength, but it may only be 8, 10, 12 years old ish. Probably that's a component that goes into the cask strength 12 year old. So I'm guessing that's 12 years old. That would be my guess. And it actually does remind me a lot of Kulila 12. Lemon peel. Burnt lemon. bit of a rich rye bready note really really amazing this is so amazing okay let's get into a little bit of water I'm gonna add just one good ounce ounce sorry milliliter one milliliter now one cool thing about this class is you don't need much to really get a nice wide surface area and it tapers nicely the flare kind of pushes away the alcohol it gets away leaving the scent to really be focused in the middle of the glass more lemon more of that candy note Absolutely, absolutely, this is 100% ex bourbon oak. It may be first fill entirely. Cheers again. Yeah. Wood smoke coming through here. Some smoke cured ham smoked baked apples a little bit of um hmm a little bit of coconut milk the young coconut milk it's clear kind of a little bit salty the finish is medium wafts of peat smoke a little bit of sweetness tiny bit of dryness but not not insanely long just we'll just call it medium 
last sip here. For me, this is a delight. It's well established that I really enjoy ex-bourbon oak. Yes, I like sherry. Yes, I like European oak. But some good air-seasoned American white oak that has had straight bourbon in it for four or six years. These can be such beautiful casks uh, to impart maturation good maturation to impart some very nice um, special flavors that develop from the previous content of the bourbon along with the um, the still very active fresh oak that lies behind the char hmm. it's a real delight well let's get on to the whiskey whistle whiskey score for Lagavulin 2017 Natural Cask Strength Distillery Exclusive Bottling. What is that going to be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be 94 out of 100. You heard it. 94 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for this very unique, lovely bottle of Lagavulin. And a really sad story, sad, happy story for Kevin about this bottle. Um... He went there and got a bottle of this. And I think on the way back to their hotel, he dropped it. He broke it. And uh, I think a friend of a friend, somebody knew somebody. And, um, well, they, they sent him a brand new bottle on the house well done lagavul and that's the way uh, this is how this is how a big company can have very small company sort of um, practices look after your clientele and lagavulin of course is probably the the darling of the diageo range so popular maybe maybe the most popular isla single malt whiskey Maybe the number one seller, in fact. I wonder who sells more. Lagavulin 16, Ardbeg 10, Bullmore 12, Kulila 12. Um, Kilholman Kilhol won't be there yet. Bunahaben 12, Brook Laddie, Classic Laddie. Um, Ardnaho isn't, isn't really open yet. So that's probably the, the market leader. So they can have some fun, and they should, and they do, and we love it for we we love them for that. So, excellent. So ninety four out of hundred, beautiful stuff. Deserves a malt hug, mmm, and a kiss. Mwah. Well done. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to click over here the little tiny emblem to subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. Click the bell so you're notified of the future Whiskey Whistles. That's the best way to help the channel, by the way. And if you're enjoying what Whiskey Whistle is bringing you, then jump in on Patreon and become a patron. You can choose just a dollar a month or three dollars or seven or whatever amount you want. You can set limits and you'll get your names in the credit, your name in the credits. You'll also get advanced viewing of the future Whiskey Whistles like this. OK, so hope you enjoy that. Come and join me. And if you happen to be in Winnipeg towards the end of the month, uh, any month, then come and check out the Winnipeg Whiskey Club, either as a member or as a guest. It's always the last Wednesday of the month. Great things coming in 2020. Great things coming in October. Amazing things coming in November of this year. But for 2020, things are going to be just off the hook. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Goodbye now. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.